these are the voyages of the Starship Exercise. Its ongoing mission to seek out new cures to standard deviations. To boldly go where no academic has gone before. Captain's Log, star date 979-2221. Mr. Jock and I have beamed down to a tiny planet in the constellation Spadina. We've come here through a major time warp, which has brought us backwards in time. We have enjoyed a long visit to the steel planet, Hamilton, where the inhabitants had wished to elevate us to the status of gods. We have declined because of an unsatisfactory financial package. We now find ourselves on this inhospitable planet inside an eerie mausoleum. We have picked up a cry of distress. Oi! Our, our mission, to investigate and save this last great white elephant from deterioration. Beam us down, Elizabeth Scotty. Mr. Jock, report. Yes. Captain Work. Mr. Jock, what do you know about this planet? What is its name? It is known as Fed Clark. Fed Clark? Yes, Captain. It is known to be a very primitive planet. The people here know nothing of neuroscience. Wow, that's what I call regressed. Captain, I think there are living creatures. Acknowledged. My tricord is picking up some faint life forms as well. Do you think that they're alive, Jock? Yes, Captain. They are alive. <laughs> they seem to be planted in rows. Perhaps... <laughs> perhaps they're vegetables. They do have brains. I'm checking their brains right now. What is that you're using, Jock? It's a pocket pet scanner. I picked up the library. 
<laughs> Jack, what do your sensors indicate? High levels of corticotropin in the locus ceruleus. These people are very anxious. <laughs> What's that? They're anxious about the second coming of Paul and the invasion of the neuroscientists. <laughs> Acknowledged. We come in peace. Explain. My name is Work. Hold on, Captain. I think that's it. I think that's the problem. Permission to proceed, Captain, to explore this further. Permission granted. Do you like work? No. Do you hate work? Yes. Are you afraid of work? Yes. Would you do anything to avoid work? Yes. I think the problem is obvious, Captain. That name. Your logic is inescapable, Mr. Jock, as usual. Search your database, Jock. I need an Earth name. I need something unthreatening. Oh, Captain. Something innocuous, I think. I think I have it. How about Brown? Greg Brown? Well done, Jock. Sounds very low-key and ordinary. <laughs> My name is Greg Brown. What are you? We're, we're from another time and place. Oh, more foreign graduates do. <laughs> no, 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 no. More time we're, 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 yes, and we're here on business. Oh, I think. Go on. We're trouble shooters. Oh. Well, you've come to the right place, but we've got lots of trouble here. Explain to us the nature of your trouble. Well, we've got trouble with money. Trouble. And we've got trouble with partnership. Trouble. And we've got trouble in the associate room. Trouble. <laughs> They're moaning. Oh, I mean meeting right now. <laughs> I know all you folks are worried, so I got a few things to say. Well, we got trouble, my friends. Right here, we got trouble right here at the Clark. Why, I'm an associate mighty proud to say, I'm always proud to say. Consider the hours I spend with a pipe in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate a cool head and a lot of sense and a lot of cash. But you're trying to build 15 old hip consults in a single day? But just as I say, it takes judgment and maturity to make money at the clerk. I say any fool can shove some blood in a test room. Call that smooth. First big step on the road to the depths of academe. I say first it's a letter to the editor, and then it's a literature review. And the next thing you know, the president is asking you to do a protocol. And listening to song I ought to tell Big Shot here to tell about getting a grant. Not honest, it come up. Some stuck up research boy come here to make that change. Make your blood boil, well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five new ceilings on your income. Ceilings that make a difference between a Porsche and a truck with a capital T that rhymes with P that stands for Paul. <laughs> All day long, your residents will be fritter, fritter, fritter in a way their award work, supervision, psychotherapy, too. Study and depress, never mind getting a follow up visit or the concurrent care. Never mind getting tickets to the hockey or a Valentine's dance on a Saturday night, and that's trouble, folks. Lots and lots of trouble. Thinking of the thousands in their tender years, shirt tails, young ones, peeking in the library, journals after work, that's trouble, folks. Right here, big, big trouble. With a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for Paul. Now I know all you folks are the right kind of partners, and I'm going to be perfectly frank. Want to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're having their study groups? They'll be trying out T-tests, trying sample size, trying to publish like academic fees, and bragging all about how they can up the money from the academic fund. One fine day, 
They leave the library, head to the eighth floor here at the Clark. Great young men and women research, shameless study drive your resident, your intern, into the arms of the jungle, instinct here, stare Friends, the active brain is the devil's playground truck. Oh, we got truck. Right here at the Clark. Right here at the Clark. Here's the capital T that rhymes the T that stands for Paul. That stands for Paul. We surely got trouble. We surely got trouble. Right here at the Clark. Right here. Gotta figure out a way to make sure our income does not fall. Our residents, residents, gonna have trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, we got trouble. Right here at the Clark. Right here at the Clark. We're the capital T that rhymes with P that stands for Paul. That stands for Paul. We surely got trouble. We surely got trouble. Right here. Right here. Remember your mortgage payments may be over. Our residents, residents, gonna have trouble. Oh, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That man with the minimal brain plan is after you. After you. We surely got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, yeah, we got trouble here. We got big, big we trouble. Capital T. We got capital T. That rhymes with P. That rhymes with P. That's Paul. That's Paul. That's Paul. Have to see. 
be the leader. Oh, I'm afraid that's completely impossible. He's much too busy during job evaluation, section reviews, star searching. Oh, I could go on for days. Tell me, is there anyone we could see who's even higher up than this Dr. Garfinkel? Well, there's always the clinical nurse manager. <laughs> <laughs> clinical manager. It's an irrational juxtaposition. <laughs> what is a clinical nurse manager? Uh, actually, John, clinical nurse manager is an archaic term. Uh, used to describe a female predominantly occupational category that's under pay equity roughly comparable to a uh, Starfleet first officer. Awesome. <coughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the night report. Just one message. Frank did not find anyone to work over time, so you are going to be short on days. For the eight patients, there is 23 staff and only 21 RRNs. Hope you have a good day. Ciao. We never had enough staff. Look at here. I think we've got a problem. Mrs. Jones hasn't had a bowel movement in years. <laughs> Body fluids. Better get the doctor to see her. Dr. Eastwood is away today. I think he's at some intergalactic conference on epidemiology and community psychogeriatrics. Who's covering? Dr. Davy. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen anyone today. I've had a rotten day. Expectations through the fog and the heart is being down. 
crisis, I just told her things were looking up. <laughs> and Dr. Hazy called looking for that new antidepressant, me answering, but he got me answering service. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you lost a lot of business. <laughs> <laughs> Say, has um, Stella Zine Zach lately? <laughs> Didn't you know? Zach dumped Stella for Vera. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. Of course, I never was pro-Zach. <laughs> and I'm certainly not pro-Vera. <laughs> Who is uh, Cora Seiden with? No one. She's been busy rest-willing par-nate spirits. Oh, par-nate? Lithane. Nate is okay. It's Sol Arcane I'm feeling sorry for. <laughs> And you saw, 
But I'm an awful and sorry for him. <laughs> well, how about the Odiris? The awful and sorry for her soul? Don't know. Hey, are you guys going to serve me or is it your day off? No, it's Ferris Gluconate's day off. <laughs> <laughs> Say, <laughs> did uh, ASA ever contact C? No! <laughs> he seldom goes after those barbital types. <laughs> like some more fast acting. <laughs> oh, come on. C's not so pure and all. I hear, she, I hear she did a strep tase for Howie. In boots. She's not exactly guardian of her virtue. You ever conjugate her? Oh, not me, but Howie got into her all right. <laughs> he said she was great for Lasix times. What a tartrate. My tartrate, you could guess, Mel. Oh, that reminds me. The other day I got really irrita irritated and called Mel a real jerk. <laughs> he left before I had a chance to apologize, and now I've got an owl of a guilty conscience. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing would give me a boost right now more than a sight of Mel. Well, you're going you're gonna to apologize, but I hope you don't get down on your knees and grab all in front of him. <laughs> Just because you lost your temper. <laughs> oh, look, here comes the new chief. Pay attention. He speaks pure pharmacolese. Uh, Chief, this is Gene, the pharmacist who was away on holidays. Oh, the Lord of Insure. <laughs> uh, I'm pleased to meet you, too. I, I hear you're a lot slacker than Galena was. Lithium up, John. Am I not promising I let you loan? <laughs> Does that mean you expect us to do a lot more bismuth? My plan is often for as little as little bismuth as person can decide. So, okay? Mm. That spells relief. He does speak to your CPS. He didn't learn that in one night hall. <laughs> Are you guys going to fill us? I want to get this filled. Next time you're here on time. I'll never get back to Kansas if this room. Oh, 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 very old pharmacy. We get up at 12 and start to work by one. Take an hour for lunch and then by two we're done. Jolly good fun. Ha 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 and a couple of TPPs. That's how we work the day away in the very old pharmacy. <laughs> I have certain rights. Wait a minute. No, I don't. I keep getting confused. <laughs> what is it you might want? I really must speak to your leader. 
Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Garfinkel is in with a divisional head. They started this strange new procedure with the doctors. Doing a job appraisal. Job appraisal? Job defined. Job appraisal, Captain. Ah, uh, yes, uh, an antiquated term used by your race in the 20th century. Uh, here at this institute, it was initiated in 1990 by the uh, dictator, correction, Captain, the director. Um, it was um, an attempt to define what the medical staff were to do in their appointed tasks. Illogical, Captain. That would mean that the medical staff didn't know what they were meant to be doing. <laughs> Now, I'm the division head. <laughs> this, this species is said to have extraordinary powers. Oh, thank you. Tommy, have you heard of the stress call? Well, not yet, but if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I am about to interview a colleague. <laughs> Got a job, hasn't he? Must have a job, mustn't he? But the days are raised just because you're employed all through. We've entered the phase of appraisal, and that's what I do. <laughs> I'm reviewing your situation. Can I be just a clinician? No, I can't. All these forms and certification. I better settle down and get myself a grant. And the data I will analyze and publish it in the archives and send it to the APA presented research day. I'll work late and pretty soon. I'll work on Friday afternoon. I think I better think it out again. <laughs> A grant you can't keep anyway. I'd rather sleep anyway. But I know they want me to excel for a star I'm all three. So at this stage of life, I've decided that I'm going to teach. <laughs> I'm reviewing your situation. I must quickly look up all the latest books. Start preparing. Presentation for seminars, tutorials, and talks. Then for hours I will supervise the Robin Hunter Prize. The residents are clamoring upon my door, they're hammering. I'll start at 8 and finish at time, or he won't remunerate. I think I better think it out again. <laughs> what should I do? Somebody. Who wants to teach? Nobody. And I'm not a researcher and really don't like working late. My only alternative now is to administrate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reviewing your situation. If you want to live, you've got to earn a bob. What's so wrong with administration? When you're in power, then you get to keep your job. And uh, one committee I do form, another one will soon be born, and three or four will follow that. And soon I'm wearing several hats. My mind is blank, my day is spent, and soon they'll make me president. I think I better think it out again. Hoi!
months, I might have arrived. I'm reviewing my situation. Academia is the only thing I see. Plans of teaching, administration. But there has to be some more to life for me. I see my colleagues every day enjoying life in every way with cottages and families with whom they spend some time at least. No pressures are enveloping, no losses are developing. So to prevent anemia, I'll give up academia. I think I'm going to think another game. Captain, I'm bothered by the competitiveness here. <laughs> you know, in the 20th century, a common problem was something called sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry. Where can we find sibling rivalry? What is sibling rivalry? Oh, I know, Sweeney. A couple of jockeys fellows. <laughs> what she means, Captain? Is an antagonistic interaction between members of a subspecies. Mm, and I think you can find that in child and family studies. <laughs> family, Chuck? Family, Captain. Another antiquated term from the 20th century. Uh, it describes a uh, disorganized assembly of creatures loosely related by blood. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Susan. Joe Beachman here. Take a memo. Attention, Granville Takata. <laughs> Dear Granville, please be advised that the renovations to the Child Families Center reception area, room 129, 130, 131, and 132 will begin December 25th, 1990. We'll be building a new office with a built-in squash court. If you're interested in this office, please see me at your earliest convenience, etc., etc. You know the rest. Actually, 
So I'm wondering, actually, how do you expect an entire family, actually, uh, extended family, and their dog, yeah, to fit in a space of that magnitude, actually? Accolades to you, Leon, for your understanding of the situation. Oh, there's the phone. <laughs> uh, hello? Granville Takas is here? Please send him in. <laughs> he is a little so my <laughs> a career on the world squash circuit. Yeah, man, sounds good to me. No, that was a paradoxical intervention. You're supposed to say no, actually. I know. Congratulations <laughs> to you, Granville, for your perceptiveness in this situation. We have to resolve this room problem. Might I suggest we go to the playroom? <laughs> That's an excellent suggestion, Leon. I'll be the father puppet. No, I want the bottom. I'm going to be the bottom. Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. What time is it? It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's been appointment at the end with the That was four hours ago. Lots of time, Mom. Give me my time. I want that. I want that. Give me my time. Excuse me. Accolades to you for being so prompt. Please, we have a small presentation for you. We'd like you to watch it. Some people wonder what a school's doing in the middle of the Clark Institute. Frankly, so do we. <laughs> but Joe seems to be into it. Because. There is nothing like a child. Nothing in this world. There is nothing that you smile. That is anything like a child. We can have me and complete their world for a happy crew. We're productive and enjoy the academic milieu. And we think the kids are lovely. From behind the one-way screen. What ain't we got?
No, I hope Edwin's feeling feisty tonight. It's been a while. <laughs> With my break over already, jeans. Doc, that was very interesting, but it still doesn't help. <coughs> yes, we've met some strange and frightening creatures. But we still haven't met who's in charge. Oh, who's in charge? Why don't you say that's what you wanted? Well, who is it? Well, I gotta be careful with what I say. You can trust us. Well, I guess I can. You're both kind of cute. <laughs> I think the people you're looking for are Master Colgan and Mistress Snap. Master Colgan? Mistress Snap? Shh! They'll be in the cafeteria right about now.
Captain's Law. Start time, 7.55.6 p.m. The search for the source of the distressing call is no further along than when we first began. In addition, I am slowly becoming more aware of inner feelings of helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness, Uselessness, poor concentration, decreased appetite, poor sleep, passive suicidality, all of this in the absence of any other major mental disorder. Captain, he seems to be suffering from what in the 20th century was called major depression, but is now known to us as cephalic hyperserotoninemia <laughs> being from Vulcan where we have no serotonin I have no sad mood Moon? You must want the mood disorders program Yes, yes That's it, mood disorders Tell me where we can find it Just follow the bilingual signs <laughs> <laughs>
You know, Dr. Talking Man never met a patient he couldn't treat. <laughs> he can turn water into liquid hell, though. I've seen him walking across the pond in Nathan Phillips Square. I saw him smile once. Enough! 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 Let me tell you what we really do here.
Recommendations, Doc. Captain, insufficient data. Insufficient data. You always say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could suggest what we do next. Well, of course I can. Why is it that no one ever asks me? I know what? everything. Well? Well, if you want to say where. <laughs> And I mean where? <laughs> Try the forensic or Forensic, top line. Forensic, Captain. A group of psychiatrists formally studying criminal behavior, now engaged in criminal behavior, devoted themselves solely to the study of sexual peccadilloes. <laughs> Far safer, Captain. And it seems to keep them in a state of constant excitement. <laughs> Hello, I'm Steve Hucker. <laughs> Head Honcho for Rensic Division. And I'll be running the anger control group today. Hello, late. Gets me so mad <laughs>
transvestites, transsexuals, and horny cross-dressers. Patients like these for forensic assessors. We love battle-metry, much pleasure it brings. These are a few of my favorite things. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is this College Street Pizza Pizza? One moment, please. Hello, boy, get it? This one for you. <laughs> Operator, please put all costs straight through to residence. I'm more important what to do. Hello, mister. My name is uh, Frank. Uh, Dr. Frank. Uh, uh, may I help you? Uh, what brings you here? I walked. Oh, great. Uh, oh, what seems to be troubling you? Everywhere I go, I hear this name over and over and over. Paul. Paul this, Paul that, Paul something else. Hallucinations! <laughs> Everywhere I go, nothing seems the same. No one's the same anymore. Depersonalization! This one too easy, even for a resident. <laughs> one small injection. Agitation, silently your senses abandon their defenses. Slowly, gently, medication stone your cockwheel spasm. TD and dystonia Twist your face away From delusions of the day Ignore hallucination Was causing fright And listen to the frank charm Of the night Close your eyes to our night staff teams, purge our thoughts of anxieties of yore. Close your eyes, have delusions, never more. Resident. 
Excellence Car Room, first floor. We send Wojtovich to Seaton House. <laughs> if possible. I'm a researcher from the research division and I missed my grant deadline. I don't need help. I have to see Dr. Garfield or Dr. Brown in the morning. That kind of trouble, I cannot help. You know the staff, old staff, feel anticipation. Don't know why there's all this agitation. Night time stays the same, I still get to play my games with the powers of the orders that I write. As Paul Garfinkel is out of so Afraid. 
Christmas time Enjoy the night and banish any fear Fantastic stage manager. Programs, the props, writing, everything. Fran, Aaron, Fran, who are our executive um, I'd like to say thanks to Maintenance, to AV, who uh, helped with all the setting up and the videos. And also I'd like to say thanks to a few other people. Uh, Adrian Amato, who was the director of the videos.
I'd like to say a special thanks to uh, someone who has really helped our creative cause. He's been uh, here at every rehearsal. He's been amazingly well prepared and incredibly talented. He, the sound, you will agree, was magnificent. Peter Hamilton, come on. writers, including Avery, Riff, Michelle, Janine, uh, Paula, uh, Joel, Lindley, myself, Ed, and finally, uh, five weeks ago, I uh, walked into Ed Cook's office and we sat down and looked at each other and having worked with Ed on a show three years ago, we knew from that look that we would be here tonight. Ed had all the roles that I had mentioned, including maintenance, props, programs, writing, directing, act, acting, Ed has done. Ed has been the hub of the wheel that has been rolling for the last five weeks to produce this show. He, he is an amazing person, he's remained positive throughout the show, he's been my co-director, my comrade and my counsellor and I'd like to say a special thank you. me to go down to Ed's cook Ed Cook's office. <laughs> and oh, and we can't forget you. And last but not least, our director and glorious leader, who did come into my office five weeks ago and said, let's put on a Christmas show. Anthony Levitt. <laughs> what I'd like to say finally is, if you have any friends that haven't seen the show, uh, tell them to come tomorrow night. If you like the show, if you didn't like the show, hold your opinion till Saturday. <laughs> and if you like the show, then you may want to come back next year. If it is next year, and if you do, you need to see a psychiatrist. Thank you. <laughs> message. Try to not find anyone to work over time, so you are going to be short on days. For the eight patients, there is 23 staff and only 21 RRNs. Hope you have a good day. Ciao. We never had enough staff. Look at here. I think we've got a problem. Mrs. Jones hasn't had a bowel movement in years. <laughs> Body fluids. Better get the doctor to see her. Dr. Eastwood is away today. I think he's at some intergalactic conference on epidemiology and community psychogeriatrics. Who's covering? Dr. Davey. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen anyone today. I've had a rotten day. I've had a few too many. So we've got a problem. <coughs> Mrs. Jones is constipated. <laughs> She's obviously very depressed. Needs a long course of psychotherapy. Will you be seeing her? Me? Yes. Well, she's uh, fixated at a rather primitive anal stage. <laughs> Stuck in the bottom. <laughs> and she needs a, a reversal of the oral and the anal <laughs>
dried up. You haven't pushed the fluid so the poor old lady's all dried up. You haven't pushed the fluid so the poor old lady's all dried up. You haven't pushed the fluid so the poor old lady's all dried up. You haven't pushed the fluid so the poor old lady's all dried up. Right up. By looking through the charts, I see she's been here for be numbing years. There's sure to be a problem when this golden age's plumbing clears. <laughs> She'll just unpack with such a storm, you'll have to call a janitor. I am the very model of a clinical nurse manager. <laughs>
<laughs> Coffee? Sure. <laughs> Sign you tapped. Oh. <laughs> um, um. So, uh, what's been Everett? <laughs> The new chief of pharmacy started. The PET scan people wanted us to pick up their ligands from the Eli Lilly booth, but I told them for radioized hopes they should try the Geigy counter. <laughs> With a pipe in my hand, our goal help you cultivate a cool head and a lot of sense and a lot of cash. But you're trying to build 15 old hip consults in a single day? But just as I say, it takes judgment and maturity to make money at the Clark. I say any fool can shove some blood in a test tube. Call that slow. First big step on the road to the depths of academia. I say first it's a letter to the editor, and then it's a literature review. And the next thing you know, your president is asking you to do a protocol and listening to some out of tell big shot here to tell about getting a grant. Not honest, it comes up. Some stuck up research boy come here to make that change. Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five new ceilings on your income. Ceilings that make a difference between a Porsche and a truck with a capital T that rhymes with P that stands for Paul. <laughs> All day long, your residents will be fritter, fritter, fritter in a way their award work, supervision, psychotherapy, too. Get a study and depress, never mind getting a follow-up visit or the concurrent care. Never mind getting tickets to the hockey or a Valentine's dance on a Saturday night, and that's trouble, folks. Lots and lots of trouble. Thinking of the fellas in their tender years, shirt tails, young one, taking to the library, journals after work, that's trouble, folks. Right here, big, big trouble. With a capital T, that rhymes with P, and that stands for Paul. Now I know all you folks are the right kind of partners, and I'm going to be perfectly frank. Want to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're having their study groups? They'll be trying out tea tests, trying sample size, trying to publish like academic fees, and bragging all about how they can up the money from the academic fund. One fine day, they leave the library, head to the 8th floor here at the Clark. Great young men and women, research, shameless study drive your resident, your intern, into the arms of the jungle, instinct here, hysterical. Friends, the active brain is the devil's playground truck. Oh, we got truck. Right here at the Clark. Right here at the Clark. With the capital T that rhymes with T that stands for Paul. That stands for Paul. We surely got trouble. We surely got trouble. Right here at the Clark. Right here. Gotta figure out a way to make sure our income does not fail. Our residents, residents, gonna have trouble. may be over. Our residents, residents are gonna have trouble. Oh, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That man with the minimum right plan is after you. He's after you. We surely got trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, yeah, we got trouble here. We got big, big with trouble. With a capital T. With a capital T. And that rhymes with P. That rhymes with P. That's Paul. That's Beautiful, you 
guys are really together. Oh, oh come on, Paul. Uh, this isn't helping. We got to have the specifics, the details. Look, you, you know we want to work harmoniously with you. Uh, uh, did you say harmoniously? Yeah, harmoniously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on. I can tell you guys are going to be productive. Uh, Paul, please, I mean, you're an awfully tough negotiator, but I just don't think you understand the kind of financial pressures we're all living under. I mean, if I don't get more of a stipend for being chief of service, I'm going to have to sell my house and get a furnished suite. Did you say suite? Yeah, suite. And, and, and Paul, I mean, you... We've got to do something about these ceilings, Paul. I've checked with a lot of places, and I've got to tell you, your ceiling proposals are completely out of line. Did you say out of line? Yeah, out of line. Hmm. Oh, sweet, sweet out of line. Sweet out of line. Try it. Come on, come on. Sweet out of line. Is there anyone we could see who's even higher up than this Dr. Garfinkel? Well, there's always the clinical nurse manager. <laughs> clinical manager? It's an irrational juxtaposition. <laughs> what is a clinical nurse manager? Uh, actually, John, clinical nurse manager is an archaic term. Uh, used to describe a female predominantly occupational category that's underpay equity roughly comparable to a uh, Starfleet first officer. Awesome. <coughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the night report. Just want Seek out new cures to standard deviations. <laughs> to boldly go where no academic has gone before. Captain's Log, Stardate 
979-2221. Mr. Jock and I have beamed down to a tiny planet in the constellation Spadina. We've come here through a major time warp, which has brought us backwards in time. We have enjoyed a long visit to the steel planet, Hamilton, where the inhabitants had wished to elevate us to the status of gods. We have declined because of an unsatisfactory financial package. We now find ourselves on this inhospitable planet inside an eerie mausoleum. We have picked up a cry of distress. Oi! Our, our mission to investigate and save this last great white elephant from deterioration. Beam us down, Elizabeth Scotty. Mr. Jock, report. Captain Work. Mr. Jock, what do you know about this plant? What is its name? It is known as Fed Clark. Fed Clark? Yes, Captain. It is known to be a very primitive planet. The people here know nothing of neuroscience. Wow, that's what I call regressed. Captain, I think there are living creatures. Acknowledged. My tricord is picking up some faint life forms as well. Do you think that they're alive, Jock? Yes, Captain. They are alive. <laughs> they seem to be planted in rows. Perhaps... <laughs> perhaps they're vegetables. They do have brains. I'm checking their brains right now. What is that you're using, Jock? It's a pocket pet scanner. I picked up the library. <laughs> Jock, what do your sensors indicate? High levels of corticotropin in the locus ceruleus. These people are very anxious. <laughs> What's that? They're anxious about the second coming of Paul and the invasion of the neuroscientists. <laughs> Acknowledged. We come in peace. Bill Coleman, bienvenue. Do you have an appointment? No. Well, you have to have an appointment. Let me explain. My name is Work. Hold on, Captain. I think that's it. I think that's the problem. Permission to proceed, Captain, to explore this further. Permission granted. Do you like Work? No! Do 
you hate work? Yes. Are you afraid of work? Yes. Would you do anything to avoid work? Yes. I think the problem is obvious, Captain. That name. Your logic is inescapable, Mr. Jock, as usual. Search your database, Jock. I need an Earth name. I need something unthreatening. Oh, Captain. Something innocuous, I think. I think I have it. How about Brown? Greg Brown? Well done, Jock. Sounds very low-key and ordinary. <laughs> My name is Greg Brown. Who are you? What are you? We're, we're from another time and place. Oh, more foreign graduates do. <laughs> We're we're shooter. Yes, and we're here on business. Oh, I think. Go on. We're trouble shooters. Oh, well, you come to the right place. Because we've got lots of trouble here. Explain to us the nature of your trouble. Well. We've got trouble with money. Trouble. And we've got trouble with partnership. Trouble. And we've got trouble in the associate room. Trouble. They're moaning. Oh, I mean meeting right now. I know all you folks are worried, so I got a few things to say. Well, we got trouble, my friends. Right here, we got trouble right here at the club. Why, I'm an associate mighty proud to say, I'm always proud to say. Consider the hours I spend. A bit of simple down and get myself a glass. And the doctor I will analyze and publish it in the archives and send it to the APA, present it in research. I'll work late and pretty soon. I'll work on Friday afternoon. I think I better think it out again. <laughs> A grant you can't keep anyway. I'd rather sleep anyway. But I know they want me to excel. For a star I'm all three. So at this stage of life, I've decided that I'm going to teach. <laughs> I must quickly look up all the latest books. Start preparing presentations for seminars, tutorials, and talks. Then for hours I will supervise and Robin Hunter Prize. The residents are clamoring upon my door. They're hammering. I'll start at eight and finish at time. Oh, he won't remunerate. I think I better think it out again. What should I do? Somebody who wants to teach? Nobody. And I'm not a researcher and really don't like working late. My only alternative now is to administrate. <laughs> If you want to live, you've got to earn a bob. What's so wrong with administration? When you're in power, then you get to keep your job. And uh, one committee I do form, another one will soon be born, and three or four will follow that. And soon I'm wearing several hats. My mind is blank, my day is spent, and soon they'll make me president. I think I better think it out again. Hoi!
and there was a patient with an acute oculogyric crisis. I just told her things were looking up. <laughs> and Dr. Hazy called looking for that new antidepressant, me answering, but he got me answering service. <laughs> Sounds like you lost a lot of business. <laughs> Say, has um, Stella seen Zach lately? Didn't you know? Zach dumped Stella for Vera. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. Of course, I never was pro Zach. <laughs> and I'm certainly not pro Vera. <laughs> Uh, Cora with. <laughs> no one. She's been busy rest really par Nate spirits. Oh. Par Nate. Lithane. Nate is okay. It's Sol Arcane. I'm feeling sorry for it. <laughs> and you Sol. But I'm an awful one sorry for him. Well, how about the Odiris? The awful one sorry for her for Sol? Don't know. Hey, are you guys going to serve me or is it your day off? No, it's Ferris Gluconate's day off. <laughs> Say, did uh, ASA ever contact C? No! <laughs> he seldom goes after those barbital types. <laughs> like some more fast acting. <laughs> oh, come on. C's not so pure and all. I hear, she, I hear she did a strep tase for Howie. In boots. She's not exactly guardian her virtue. You ever conjugate her? Oh, not me, but Howie got into all right. <laughs> he said she was great for Lasix times. What a tartrate. My tartrate, you could ask Mel. Oh, that reminds me. The other day I got really irritated and called Mel a real jerk. He <laughs> left before I had a chance to apologize, and now I've got a hell of a guilty conscience. <laughs> Nothing would give me a boost right now more than the sight of Mel. Well, you can, you can apologize, but I hope you don't get down on your knees and grab all in front of him. <laughs> Just because you lost your temper. <laughs> oh, look, here comes the new chief. Pay attention. He speaks pure pharmacopolese. Chief, this is Jean, the pharmacist who was away on holidays. Oh, the Lord of Insure. <laughs> uh, I'm pleased to meet you, too. I, I hear you're a lot slacker than Kalina was. Lithium up, John. Am I not promising I let you loan? <laughs> Does that mean you expect us to do a lot more bismuth? My plan is often for as little as little bismuth as person can decide. So, okay? Mm. That spells relief. He does speak your secrets. He didn't learn that in one night hall. Are you guys gonna fill us? I want to get this filled. Next time you're here on time. I'll never get back to Kansas if this We get up at 12 and start to work by 1. Take an hour for lunch and then by 2 we're done. Jolly good fun. Ha 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 and a couple of TPPs. That's how we work the day away in the Ariel Pharmacy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, Parkinson here. Well, what's up? You're holding a knife where? Are you going to do what with it? One moment, please. <laughs> now, what was that, sweetie? <laughs> Listen, madam, there's really no such person as Greg Brown. My real name is Captain Work, and I'm commander of the Federation Starship Exercise. Yeah, and I'm Willie Tomlin. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, I am the captain of our ship, and I need to speak to your captain, your leader. Now look at Sweeney. As an employee of the Clark Institute, I have certain rights. Wait a minute. No, I don't. I keep getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you might want? I really must speak to your leader. Well, I'm sorry. Dr. Garfinkel is in with a divisional head. They started this strange new procedure with the doctors. Doing a job appraisal. Job appraisal? Job to find. Job appraisal, Captain. Ah, uh, yes, uh, an antiquated term used by your race in the 20th century. Uh, here at this institute, it was initiated in 1990 by the uh, dictator, correction, Captain, the director. Um, it was um, an attempt to define what the medical staff were to do in their appointed tasks. Illogical, Captain. That would mean that the medical staff didn't know what they were meant to be doing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary powers. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Tommy, have you heard of the stress call? Well, not yet, but if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I am about to interview a colleague. <laughs> a man's got a job, hasn't he? Must have a job, mustn't he? But the days of the race just because you're in Reviewing your situation. Can I be just a clinician? No, I can't. All these forms and certification. 